Today we will discuss the topic the basic forms of communication, specifically nonverbal communication. The lecture consists of two issues. First, the definition of nonverbal codes. Second, nonverbal messages in intercultural communication, body movements, space, time and other nonverbal code systems. Let's start defining the word nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication is defined as all types of communication that take place without words. As uh, generally characteristic of anything that is defined as the absence of something else, verbal communication includes a very wide range of communication behaviors, everything from a nod to the wave of a hand to a wearing a new suit. All of these activities and artifacts transmit meaning, so they are, uh, they are considered to be communication. None involves words, so uh, there are examples of nonverbal communication. Why do people use nonverbal communication? Why don't they just speak and use verbal communication? Why is nonverbal communication so important? First of all, nonverbal communication is present everywhere and usually come first. There is no way to avoid communicating non-verbally. Even the decision not to speak is a message, such as when you do not talk with the person sitting next to you in a bus. In other words, you cannot stop someone from making inference about your non-verbal behavior, even if you are not intentionally sending a message. This statement is certainly true of non-verbal communication. Much nonverbal communication is unconscious and unintentional. Secondly, nonverbal communication usually comes first. Even before individuals open their mouths, they have communicated nonverbally by their posture, their clothing, and so forth. During the initial impression between two or more people, when there is a high degree of uncertainty in the communication situation, nonverbal communication is particularly important. Thirdly, nonverbal communication is especially likely to be trusted when nonverbal communication contradicts verbal communication. Nonverbal communication wins out because it is difficult for individuals to control their nonverbal messages. Such messages are perceived as more valid. It is difficult to lie nonverbally. However, under certain circumstances, even nonverbal communication can be dece deceptive. Facial expressions, for example, are uh, carefully watched in card games in order to determine if a card player is bluffing. The fourth, nonverbal communication can lead to mis misunderstanding, especially when verbal messages are missing or limited. If two participants in a communication situation do not share the same meaning for a nonverbal symbol, the result will be miscommunication. The language of nonverbal symbols differs from culture to culture, just as verbal language does. The last, uh, the fifth, nonverbal communication is especially important to the intercultural communication situations. When verbal and nonverbal communication are redundant, misunderstandings are less likely to occur. Each type of communication can reinforce the other. When the verbal fluency of the communication participants is limited, nonverbal reinforcement may carefully clarify the intended meaning. Participants in a communication process adapt to each other's speaking style, for example, by leaning forward, matching the other's speech rate, assuming a similar posture, using similar gestures, or pronouncing words with the same accent. If a, if a communicator rejects the style of the other as culturally in, inappropriate, for example, by leaning away, intentionally slowing the speech rate, or assuming assuming an inviting posture, the flow of communication is interrupted. Edward Hall stated, people in interactions move forward in a kind of dance, but they are not aware of their synchronous movement. He found that each culture has its own characteristic manner of sitting, standing, reclining and gesturing. Most people are unaware when these are happening. 
when they become aware that they are unable to pay attention to anything else. When people from a low-context culture interact with someone with a high-context culture, the rhythms are likely to be very different and may create such discomfort that communication is jeopardized. There are seven types of nonverbal communication. First, kinesics and other body movements. Second, space. Third, time. Fourth, touch. Uh, voice, artifact, and physical appearance. Now uh, let's focus on body movements. Kinesics is a type of nonverbal communication that involves body movements and activities. The four main types of kinesics, kinesics communication are emblems, illustrators, regulators, affect displays. Emblems are body movements that can be translated into words and they and that are used intentionally to transmit a message. One type of emblem that is particularly important, ranking second only to facial expressions, is hand gestures. People talk with their hands. Hand gestures like the thumbs up or the thumb and the forefinger circle stands for OK sign. The palm outward gestures mean silence or stop and circling a forefinger near one, uh, one's head, that means crazy, all have a widely understood uh, meaning in the United States. But the meanings of these emblems may be quite different in any other nation. For example, the thumb and forefinger circle in, is a sign for the sex act in some Latin American nations. So, hand gesture can be very confusing interculturally. As with verbal language, nonverbal codes are not universal. There are gender differences as well as culture differences in hand gestures. An emblem unique to Japanese women is the hand held in front of the mouth when smiling or laughing. People from the United States perceive this gesture as girlish, polite, and cute. Only women in Japan cover their mouths when smiling. Men never do. Illustrators are kind of kinesics um, behavior that accompanies what is said verbally. Hand and body gestures are a natural part of speaking most for, uh, mo for most individuals. Illustrators include gesturing with one's hand, smiling or frowning. They are particularly noticeable when an individual is giving directions to a certain place. Illustrators differ uh, from emblems in that they cannot be translated into words. Another one, regulators are kinetic behaviors that control turn-taking and other uh, procedural aspects of interpersonal communication. A practical necessity in every conversation is to determine who is going to speak first, next, and so on. This process of no, no, turn-taking is mainly an unconscious process. Sometimes problems occur, such as when two or more people talk uh, at once, and no one can be understood. Usually this behavior occurs when individuals are excited or angry. In most conversations, tone taking proceeds smoothly because of regulators, like the turn of a head, gaze, and other body uh, movements. The next one is gaze. Uh, a speaker who maintains eye contact with members of the audience is perceived as a forceful presenter in the United States. But direct eye contact with elders is perceived as disrespectful by some Native Americans as in, na in, a, in Asian cultures like Japan. It is extremely impolite to gaze at one's grandparents' eyes. Japanese children are taught to gaze at their grandparents' Adam's apple instead. Appropriate gazing behavior can be uh, can have important consequences in certain communication situations. The last one is affect displays, are uh, kinesic behaviors that express emotions. Facial expressions are one of the most important ways of communicating meaning to another person. For example, surprises conveyed by uh, arching the eyebrows. 
opening the eyelids so that the white of the face of the eye shows. In contrast, the emotion of fear is shown by raising the uh, eyebrows and drawing them together while uh, tensing the lips and drawing them back. Disgust is conveyed by wrinkling the nose, lowering the eyebrows and raising the upper lip. Proxemics is nonverbal communication involving space, space and time as well. The word proxemes derives from the same Latin root as proximity, implying that one dimension of space is how close or distant to or more people are located. How physically close or distant two people stand when they talk tells a great deal about their relationship. A distance of one uh, eight to thirteen inches between males, for example, is considered very aggressive. When in a European American talks with a Latin American, the former feels that the Latin American is uncomfortably pushy or trying to be intimate, while the Latin American perceives the person from the United States as cold and remote. Arabic people from the Middle East uh, do not and do not feel that someone is friendly unless they are standing close enough to smell the garlic on the other's breath. Clearly, there are strong cultural differences in perception of the appropriate space between people involved in the interpersonal communication. Time can be organized into technical, formal and informal components. Uh, formal time involves the process of separating units of time into days, weeks, and months. As for example, in the United States, formal time is used for precise ap appointments like government hearings, court dates, uh, job interviews. And as for formal time, it is in the same culture has a more loosely defined approximation. For example, if you um, uh, eight o'clock can mean everywhere between eight uh, till eight fifteen to eight even fifty. Informal time involves attitude about punctuality within a culture. Symbolic uses of time can be related to a person's or a culture's orientation. In the West uh, time is viewed as a linear progression from the past to the present to the future. Other cultures do not segment events in the same way. Some cultures have a reverence for past experiences. Uh, they value pre precedent and reject the present as unrested. If we speak about the touch, we are, we are to speak about haptics. Haptics is nonverbal communication involving touch. Individuals within their culture vary as to the degree to which they touch while speaking and there are important differences in touching from culture to culture. Touching is, in, is uh, usually intended to convey warmth, caring and other positive emotions, but it may playful or show irritation. Hugging or kissing as a greeting conveys intimacy. A set of cultural conventions guides who may touch whom, under what conditions and where to touch. For instance, same-sex touching in the United States is more permissible than cross-sex touching. Male-to-male -male touching is more or less frequent than female-to-female uh, female touching. Perhaps out of fear, that such touching might be conceived, perceived as indicating a sex preferences. The difference is the displays of touching are not only gender-based, they are also determined by status. In business, higher status employees generally intimate touch. Low status in, uh, employees are less likely to do so since the behavior could be interpreted as assuming a familiarity which does not exist. Shaking hands is an example of differing cultural perceptions. In the United States, a moist handshake transmits a message that the individual is nervous or anxious. Most people in the culture think that a firm handshake is appropriate and that a weak handshake is wimmy. In India, 
where handshaking is not practiced very widely as a form of greeting, a rather limb handshake is culturally appropriate. Indians generally greet each other by holding their palms together in front of their chest. In Korea and in Mali, a person touches his or her right forearm with the left hand while shaking hands. Moroccans kiss the other person's hand while shaking. Islamic men can greet each other by embracing and kissing first, first on one cheek and then on the other. The next one is the, um, is the use of voice. Paralanguage is a vocal communication other than the verbal content. In addition to loudness, paralanguage includes the speed of speaking, accent, and tone. Often hearing a stranger's voice in a telephone conversation, for example, is sufficient to guess the person's gender, ethnic group, and age. Voice is a means by which individuals can be identified non-verbally. Loudness of voice when speaking is another type of nonverbal communication. Generally, we speak more loudly when we are more distant from the person we are addressing or when we are in a public speaking situation, such as in the classroom. Males often speak more loudly than females. Asians generally speak softly, with Asian women speaking even more softly than men. Most Thais speak very softly and it is uh, considered good manners to do so. In Arabic nations, males speak louder in uh, order to indicate uh, sincerity. North Americans consider this verb aggressive. A Saudi Arabian also lowers his voice in order to show respect for a superior. Emotions uh, such as anger, excitement, or enthusiasm may be conveyed by speaking in a loud voice. Nonverbal communication also involves the notion of cultural space, which is the context that form our identity, where we grow up and where we live. Our identities and views are formed in part in relation to cultural places. Each region has its own histories and ways of life that help us understand who we are. Our decision to tell, who, uh, to tell you something about the cultural spaces we grow up in uh, was meant to communicate something about who we think we are. The meanings of cultural space are dynamic and ever-changing. Many intercultural communication misunderstandings occur to nonverbal messages. It is particularly difficult for one individual to learn the verbal codes of another culture. Even if someone knows the nonverbal codes of another culture, the unintentional or unconscious nature of nonverbal communication requires that such understandings must be practiced until they become natural to, be, to the individual. Thus, when misunderstandings arise, we are more likely to question our verbal communication than our nonverbal communication. We can use different words to explain what we mean or look up words in a dictionary or ask someone to explain unfamiliar words. But it is more difficult to identify and correct nonverbal communication or misperception. Nonverbal communication and behavior can reinforce, substitute for, or contradict verbal behavior. When we shake our heads and say no, we are reinforcing verbal behavior. When we point instead of saying over there, they are substituting nonverbal behavior for verbal communication. That means nonverbal communication operates at a more at a more subconscious level. Thus, we tend to think that people have less control over their nonverbal behavior. Therefore, we can think of it, uh, of it as containing the real message. 